So let me give you an example of what this is. This is the easiest way to get into this. Um, this is a, uh, a small business, and I've chosen a, a small business because it's easier to explain with a small example. And this concerns uh, the, uh, the world shipping industry. And the world shipping industry is about to be uh, faced with some new regulations that, that control the uh, quality of the water that the ships put in their, in their ballast. Right? When a ship um, unloads all of the uh, cheap computers in uh, Amsterdam, the ship goes up in the sea. And if they didn't do anything else, the ship would fall over. Right? So what they do is they pump water into the bottom of the ship to stop the ship falling over. That's called ballast water. Unfortunately, um, in the ballast water, there are all sorts of little bugs and uh, small animals. The problem is that they pick up these small animals from one place in the, in the globe and they transport it to somewhere else in the globe. So in the Caribbean, right now, there is a major problem with uh, lionfish. Lionfish are very aggressive fish predators. They don't belong in the Caribbean. They came from the Middle East. And they may have come from the Middle East in the ballast water of ships. So the regulations are going to require ship operators to clean their water. Uh, so this will be biologically clean. And that means that we've got to do different things. So Hitachi's method is um, a kind of magnet method with uh, special chemicals. There is a chlorine treatment system, which is a bit like you do with your, your swimming pool. Right? That's how you clean your swimming pool. And there is another technology where you filter the water and you treat it with, with UV. And the company I'm talking about uh, uses this, this method here. So here's the problem. This is a small division of a large marine engineering business. It's a, a Norwegian uh, business. They, they do big scale marine engineering uh, equipment. And the problem is this. There are something like 35 different systems for doing this um, from more than 50 suppliers. That will not go on. You know, these suppliers will go out of business here. Right? There are 57,000 vessels worldwide and 2,000 new ships every year, minus the scrap. Right? The challenge is for my, my friend who, who runs this business, how do I capture the ship operator's decision to use my technology? Then, how do I get him to install that equipment very quickly in all of his ships? Then, how do I capture sales to the new vessels. And here is the number of companies of different sizes. 70 companies operate uh, more than 100 vessels. And there's 25,000 companies operating fewer than 10 vessels. So it's a very, very diffuse market. And the vessels themselves, the ships themselves, vary considerably in scale. Right? So there are um, a very small number of very large ships. And these, these are really huge ships. And this is the rate at which the system needs to clean the water. So this is cleaning an Olympic swimming pool, sorry, every, every hour or two, right? That's, what, that's how fast these systems have to work. Now, no single supplier can successfully uh, do all of that. So um, suppliers have to focus. But here is the decisions that one of these equipment suppliers has to, has to make. Which vessels should I target? How many models of equipment should I launch? Should I just have one model of one size, or should I have three different models of different sizes? How much effort should I put into winning the agents who will into the shipping operators? How many salespeople should I employ? How much should I focus on new customers or repeat sales? What price should I charge? How many engineers should I employ? How much investment do I need? Um, what profits will arise? What cash flow will come out? How are you going to answer those questions? Now, I can tell you, if, if you're not familiar with the strategy field, 
The strategy field cannot answer those questions. We have no theory, we have no frameworks, we have no methods that can answer those questions. Right? What we need is a tool that can answer those questions. And that's where applying engineering control theory to the structure of the enterprise system will give us the ability to answer these questions. Um, and, of course, these qu questions don't just arise today. They'll have the same questions next month and next quarter and next year. It's just that all the numbers will have changed. So we've got to have a method that will keep, keep answering these questions all the time when all of the numbers change. So this is the, uh, some business plan uh, results for, for this company. And you'll notice uh, we've got the number of models that they're planning to offer. They've got the number of customers. So this is the number of actual customers, and this is the number of prospective customers who might buy from them. This is their actual sales in units. This is the installed base in units in the ships. This is the company's income statement, revenue, cost of goods, um, the green line is the cash operating expenses, and the purple line is the cash profit. And this is the actual cash. So we're losing money, and then we start making money, and we get our cash back, and then we end up hopefully making a lot of cash. Now you'll notice that there are some small dotted lines here. Right? Those small dotted lines are the company's actual results. Month by month, over the first 21 months, of the company's history. What we want is a model that matches what the company has actually achieved. Right? That gives us confidence that the model is probably doing the right things. The thing that gives us more confidence is if all the other dotted lines match. So we've got the right number of customers, we've got the right number of sales, we've got the right amount of cash, we've got the right number of employees. That gives us confidence that our model is replicating the real world. And that's what we want. Um, now, if we have time, um, we, can play this, uh, we can play this model. I won't ask you to do it now because we might not have the time. That's the URL you need, right? sdl.re slash bwts. That will take you to a read-only model of this company. So let me explain uh, what this model uh, actually looks like. This is the whole model. That's the performance summary I just showed you, and it's simply extracted from all these parts of the, of the working model. This piece up here is the R&D to create new models this is models awaiting approval. The, the equipment has to be approved by the um, International uh, Maritime Organization and the US Coast Guard. And these are models awaiting approval. And they have a plan to develop models at a certain rate and release new models. Um, this is the number of agents who uh, are uh, selling our equipment on our behalf. This is all running over the same, uh, is that 60 months? I think that's 60 months, yeah. This is customers. And this is uh, prospective customers, and this is actual customers. Um, and, oh, sorry, this, this bit here is sales. This is the sales orders being captured from those customers. This is the initiation of orders. Um, so orders lead to projects to build the equipment. Uh, this is um, equipment awaiting installation. This is the installation of equipment into uh, the vessels of these, these customers. And we have engineers who manage the building of the equipment, and we have other engineers who manage the installation of the equipment in the ships. Where do we get money from? Where do sales come from? Well, we get paid when the equipment gets installed in the vessel. So this is orders, right? But this is actually getting paid. And there's a payment delay here as well. This over here, this bit, this is the income statement. Um, so the income statement says 
how much revenue do we get from the installation of equipment in the ships owned by these customers? And where do costs come from? Well, there are some costs down here which are driven by the number of staff we employ, and there's also some R&D expenditure up here. The company subcontracts much of act its activity, so there are quite a lot of elements here that are not in this model because they're simply bought in. Um, and we have the price that we charge for the equipment and the competitor's price, and that determines uh, how much we sell. So how does the model actually work? Well, this is the, the equipment projects in progress. So we have 54, at this point in time, we have 54 units of equipment waiting to be installed in customer vessels. We are installing that equipment at the rate of 17 units per month, and this is the installed base of 445 units that we hope to have by month 60. What determines that rate? Well, uh, it's the maximum of, of what these service engineers can do, or the number that is coming into, into here. So this thing here, is the maximum possible if there are projects in progress. And each element in this contains a very simple formula. So the maximum projects per month equals the number of service engineers multiplied by the maximum of uh, projects per month per person. Just multiply those two numbers together. No, there's no scary maths here, right? This is accumulations. The installed vessels now is the installed vessels last month plus the number of vessels installed during the month. Okay? Last month plus what's been added equals this month. Um, so you can think of every, uh, every object, think of this every object in this diagram as being a single row in a spreadsheet. We have the 60 months going across the top and we have the same formula in every cell going across the 60 months. In principle, you could build these models in Excel. You would be mad to try, right? Don't even think about it. It would be, it you know, it's very soon blows your mind. It is way easier to do it this way. Right? You can't make cell reference errors to start with, right? Yeah, this, this thing here can only depend on that and that. It can't depend on anything else. So if you try to put in a formula that includes something else, it'll say, you can't do that, that's, that's not allowed. And uh, this equation here, um, that actually is the equation. It's not D dollar 38 multiplied by worksheet 24 dollar B dollar 39, right? It is installed vessels last month added to the number of vessels installed per month. We use real terms to describe real things. Same thing works all the way through. This is prospects being won uh, by our salespeople and by our, our agents. So we've got agents uh, winning prospects and we've got our salespeople winning prospects. And our salespeople convert those prospects into actual customers. And uh, that generates some, uh, some sales. And This is um, vessels, this is customers giving us access to uninstalled vessels, this is new projects, this is projects being started, projects delivered. Um, you have all the slides, I won't go through all of these in detail in the interest of time, so let me just scroll through these quickly um, and uh, we can come back to this. Uh, this is uh, kind of important, this is the number of salespeople we employ and this is an allocation um, procedure. We decide we have three people who can make 120 calls per month. Where do those calls go? Do they go to new customers we've never spoken to before? Do they go to prospects to get those prospects to sign the first contract? Do they go to existing customers to try to, pers to persuade them to give us more uh, sales? Or do we go to cust uh, competitors' customers and try to get them to convert? Okay. So there are a number of different things our salespeople can do, and we allocate those people to those tasks. 
This is the income statement. I'll, I'll pass over this to explain that. So uh, that is what a strategy dynamics model gives you. It is a working quantified model of the enterprise and its performance. 